Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back with another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. Uh, we are back with another, the uh, first of two episodes uh, of Quick Hits. Every day we come at you with, uh, Quick Hits comes at you twice a day, every day, two episodes a day, eight, ten minutes, just to keep you up to on all the latest boxing news and rumors. Um, today we're going to break down Carl Frampton um, and Jamel Herring uh, for the WBO 130-pound belt. Um, but before we get into that, uh, today is April 2nd, uh, 2021. Uh, it's National Autism Day. Um, there's going to be a link in the description below. Uh, 3D Boxing is a huge supporter and advocate of TACA, um, the Autism Community in Action, T-A-C-A, the Autism Community in Action, TACA. Um, and we're going to put a description in there. Um, if you want to help Duke and Dax battle... Um, Fight their battle of recovery of, from autism. Autism is a uh, curable condition. Um, please consider donating or at least sharing um, the fundraiser for Duke and Dax. Um, you can see um, that little uh, uh, this guy right here, this thing right here, um, whatever you call that. That's uh, Duke and Dax. Prove them wrong. Um, that's that's their cause. That's their charity. Um, so please. You know the link is in the description for the for the donation. I'll at least share it. Um, if you if you, if it's not something you can donate to, that's totally understandable. Um, but if it is, um, or if it's not, please please just share it. Um, it's a, a a charity that's near and dear to our hearts. Uh, okay, let's get into some bright news. Uh, Jamel Herring versus Carl Frampton. Finally, this fight is here. It's been delayed. This thing was supposed to go off last year. Uh, but finally, we're here. We're one day away. Both fighters are on weight. Uh, Frampton came in at 129.9. Herring came in at 129.4. Both guys are on weight. We are good to go. Um, so we're going to get into a little bit. Look, um, both guys are aging. Both guys are not coming off the best performance. Um, Frampton actually fought his last fight at lightweight at 135. Um, the guy fought trainer, took it on late notice. So they didn't have time to cut weight. Uh, plus, it was COVID. Um, so... They had him at 135, but obviously uh, he's a 130-pounder, and he's coming up. This is his third weight class. This is Herring's. Herring comes down to 130 from 135. Uh, so Herring's obviously taller and longer, but he's, you know, he's the bigger, heavier guy. Uh, now, he's not the bigger puncher. Uh, that probably Frampton, although Frampton's not. You know, Frampton is the bigger puncher for sure, but he's not a huge puncher. He's a good puncher. Um, so, look. It's going to be like, um, well, let me get rid of this. I'm sorry, guys. I'm having trouble. There. Okay. Um, for Jamel Herring to win this fight, Jamel Herring just has to do Jamel Herring things. He needs to stay on the outside. He needs to box. He needs to keep the jab pumping. He needs to win the battle of the jab. He needs to keep Frampton up off him. He has to use the whole ring. You know, he has to be the quicker guy. He has to be the more agile guy. He's got to stay on his feet, stay on his bicycle. And, and keep the fight at long range and not let Frampton on the inside. If Herring can do that, he'll win the fight. Okay? If Herring can execute what he does, it's his fight to win. Right? I know Frampton is a slight betting favorite. Unless I checked, he was a slight betting favorite. Um, and and I, I say, l l let him take it. Like, Frampton has won belts at 22 and 26. Frampton's a great fighter. Um, but the best days are behind him. He did not look good against Trainer. But at any bad thing you could say about Frampton against Trainer, you could also say about Herring against Okendo. He did not look great in that fight, even though he was winning rounds. And uh, Frampton finally got the stoppage. Herring, there was an odd disqualification from a headbutt, from an intentional headbutt. Uh, but he had won almost all the rounds. I had seven rounds to one, I think, at the time of the stoppage. So both guys were, you know, dominating the fight. Uh, but they weren't, you know, it's lower caliber opponent, and neither guy was looking great doing it. Uh, Frampton... Uh, Frampton should be the underdog. Um, Frampton doesn't have the clear path to victory, although he can win this fight. He can win this fight by getting on the inside. Okay, I, I want to see him work Frampton. I want to see him work Herring's body. Herring is big for one thirty. He comes down. He, 
It's no secret he has trouble making weight. He can work his body, wear him down. You know, kind of test his legs, take the spring out of his legs. I think he can have success. Um, I, I think Herring is going to fade late, late in the fight, and I, I think if, if Herring doesn't win all the early rounds, for instance, he's got a chance to steal this thing on points. I don't see this be, being a stoppage, so I, I see it going to points. Uh, I think if Frampton could win a couple of the early rounds, get in, stay busy, fire off the jabs. I want to see lots of jabs followed by right hands. I want to see that right hand to the body. I want to see him work down the body, try to wear Herring down. Um, I, I think you know, Herring may be drained a bit. Um, and if you get him in the deep water, if, if if you get to the eighth round and it's not 7-1 Herring, uh, for him, which I think it will be. I, I'm picking Herring. We'll get into that. But uh, for him, he's got to stay busy. He's got to apply constant pressure. And when he gets inside, he's got to throw combinations. He's got to throw combinations. Um, he, he's going to have to eat jabs at times to get on the inside and land a power shot. You know, he may have to... It's one of those things where if he can stay even through eight, he wins the fight because he'll he'll win he'll win the last rounds. I think, even though he is old, because Herring's old too, and he's I think he is draining himself to make the weight. Um, I I think the body attack is is key for Herring and and combinations and letting the shots go on the inside. Um, you know I I, I think. What, so what I foresee, and this is a good card. We have Donnie Nietzsche on the card too, but um, and uh, Tyrone McKenna against an unbeaten prospect. So the, the whole card is good, but I digress on that. Um, what I see in this fight is Herring dominating the early rounds. I don't think Frampton stays busy enough. I think Frampton gives away early rounds. I think he tries in the second half of the fight to, and has a level of success with it, of uh, bringing on the pressure, throwing combinations. And making life miserable for for Herring, except it's too little, too late. I think Frampton is up big, you know, five rounds to nothing after five, um, and at that point, you know, the last seven rounds, let's say, it goes five two for for Frampton. I, I think Herring squeaks out a seven two, a uh, seven five eight four kind of decision, where it's close, it's competitive, but it's clear that uh, Herring had just done too much work in the early rounds, and Frampton came up, you know, too little, too late, um, and, and I like both these guys, and I want to see both these guys win. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen, so my official prediction is, is Herring holds on, runs out the clock, so to speak, on front, and then takes a split decision in a fight that he was front-running in um, off of his jab and movement. Um, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Um, give me your predictions. Let me know what you think about mine. Um, remember, today is National Autism Day. It's, it's Autism Awareness Month. Please consider making a donation to Taka. That's the uh, Autism Community in Action. Um, leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like and subscribe. Quick Hits comes at you twice a day, every day. Um, twice uh, twice a day, every day. Eight, ten minutes to keep you up to date. We're going to be back a little later today. Uh, and we're going to break, uh, break down the big news of the uh, junior middleweight fight that was announced. Um, we're going to get into that. Lubin and Rosario, which is a great fight. Um... But Sharon Wolf on social media, uh, please take a look at the link in the description for uh, the Autism Community Action, as it is Autism Month. Help Duke and Dax recover, if you can. Um, from tech, uh, It is April 2nd, like I said, 2021. Ivan Calderon is still not in the Boxing Hall of Fame. We need to make that change. Let's change that. Let's get the Iron Boy in the Boxing Hall of Fame class of 2021. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.